Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 125 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah i should have said like welcome to under the sea with rachel and joe what is with the ridiculous outfit well i apologize for the blue hair but i definitely have wig head right now um so we started a new series in coastal kids it's a racing series and there's all kinds of racing they're racing cars they're racing like running they're racing by skiing they're racing dirigibles at one point <laughs> and so i'm like what am i going to do to dress up so i thought it would be easiest to do a runner so i'm in the uh coastal kids running team i had this on my back and um yeah i thought i had this like mermaid shirt and i'm like the only thing is if you're gonna be a mermaid, you gotta have some mermaid hair. So here we are. She came in to me this morning wearing this outfit and I was like, what are you wearing? Like, I never know what I'm gonna wake up to on Sunday morning. I know, I actually talked to somebody on Saturday night and I was like, hey, I need you to acknowledge that you know me on Sunday <laughs> because none of my family is going to act like they know me. And she says to me, well, like it's a racing thing. And I'm like, what, it, it, this makes no sense. I'm like, it's a racing theme. Why don't you put on like a pit crew outfit or a NASCAR outfit or? Well, I mean, they had a NASCAR outfit at um, like Party City, but it was like 50 bucks and like super booby. And I was like, there's no way that I can wear this to church. So yeah. So we went with a little bit more modest, but I've got my little fun run tutu on and it was a great talking point with the kids. Definitely. Was it, it was fun. Yeah, the kids had fun. But then last night, it was like, oh, you're a runner, Miss Rachel? So, like, race me. <laughs> so, in the field out in back of the church, we raced. And I'm one of those people that's like, I'm not letting a kid win. Like, if you beat me, then, like, it, it's got to be authentic. So, man, I, I ran my guts out. There were, like, three kids that came in ahead of me in the <laughs> race. But I did beat a two-year-old, so there's a win. Well, you got to go to church yesterday. Anthony and I had a game and I put a thing on our Instagram story because I got this phone call from the assigner that like, hey, I need you to supply two people for your crew to go work the little kids, the five and six year olds. The teeny tiny. And we've talked about this before and I avoid those games like the plague. Yeah. They are the worst. I mentioned it in the blog the Not other day. Not because of the kids. Never because of it's, the kids. I love the kids. If we could play these games with no parents allowed at the game, at the field, like drop your kid off and you have to leave. You right. can't even sit with binoculars. I'd be fine. Be, and like, I was like, oh, okay, no problem. Nobody on my crew wants to work the games because it's horrible. The parents think it's the Super Bowl and yeah. they're five. And so I was like, okay, well, I guess I have to work it because it's my crew. So I told Anthony, guess what? If I have to work it, you have to work it because we need two of us. Yeah. So we get there. We're working the game. It starts going okay. And I looked at Anthony. I'm like, wow, the parents have gotten better. That was until the league reps walked away at halftime. Did you speak too soon? I definitely spoke too soon. Anthony looked at me. He's like, you jinxed us. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't believe this. I mean, people yelling like he's holding I'm like they all hold I'm like I'm not flagging it unless like it affected the play he goes it did affect the play I'm like the hold is over there the ball is 30 yards away it didn't affect it he's like oh no no, you have to flag that and I'm like no go away it was just I mean and again parents chasing us to our car like you better run I mean Again, five and six year olds. Gracious. This is why people don't want to officiate. And when our kids were little, before I even met Rachel, you know, my boys were involved in a little kid youth program. It was called T-Ball Juniors. It wasn't even sanctioned by Little League. It was only sanctioned by the city because there was no other league like this. We, we had three and four year olds playing T-Ball. How cute is that? And it was so much fun to watch because all the kids did was like, put the, we put the ball on the tee, they would hit the ball, 
and he would run to first base or she would run to first base. And then the next kid would get up and he would run to first base or she would run to first base. And the kid that was on first would run to second base. And all, the last kid would just clear the bases. Right. And it was fun to watch because, of course, like, they're three and four-year-olds and they all want to touch the ball. So you would uh, hit the ball uh-huh. and you'd see 13 kids come running, chasing the ball, no matter what position they're playing. Because oh every gracious. kid played. And it was awesome. You didn't, we didn't keep score. Parents were great. And I just don't know what's happened because... Again, even yesterday, a parent walked up to Anthony and goes, what's the score? He goes, like, I don't know. They're like, how do you not know? And he's like, we don't keep score. No. He's like, what kind of sport doesn't keep score? Little like, kid sport? A sport designed for five to six-year-olds to introduce them to youth sports? Yeah. So, yeah. So, that's that was my the start of my day. And my day definitely did not finish well. So, I actually had a great week. You know, our week went awesome. Our website went up. We got new windows on the house. Yes, which are awesome. I'm loving the new windows. I mean, I haven't noticed whether or not we're going to have a significant savings in our energy bill, but I do notice the house is cooler. Yeah, the house is definitely cooler. Of course, me, like, I'm always, like, on top of stuff, so I keep looking in the FBL app to see, like, has my electric bill gone down on my daily average yet? And it looks like it's, like, 40 cents, and I'm like, okay, Somebody's burning more electric because it had to have gone down more than 40 cents a day. Dad thermostat alert. So, yeah. So, I'm loving the new window. What I'm really liking about the new windows is the sound. It is so much quieter in the house. It is. Because we changed everything except for one door. Mm -hmm. And it is. It's ridiculously quiet. Like, I don't even hear the dog barking when when she's out in the backyard. That's true. That is so weird that you mentioned that. Because I was thinking, like, are we getting less traffic in front of our house? But it's the windows. Yeah, it's definitely the windows. So that's been awesome. So the week started off great. It finished that yesterday on my way to my game, I got a text message from a customer showing me a picture of a pile of lawn debris in front of his house. And he's saying like, I need this taken care of. I need you to get rid of this because the city's gonna find me. So I looked at Anthony and I'm like, hey, Anthony. It's 9.30 like, at night. It, we need to do this today because tomorrow's church. We can't, you know, obviously, you know, like do it tomorrow. Monday we have a full day of work, so. And we want to be able to get rid of this stuff. Plus Monday's a holiday. I didn't even realize Monday's a holiday. No, I didn't either. Columbus Day? It's Columbus Day, yeah. So. We finish our game, and I said to Anthony, like, let's order wings, because there is a good wing place near us that does fry their wings in, like, a good fat. It's delicious. They're and, really good. And what is their, like, buffalo sauce? Is it, like, just Frank's Red Hot it's butter? It's Frank's Red Hot Sauce mixed with butter. They're, like, they say, they actually say it on their menu, this is Frank's, and then we concoct it with our own butter it's to up the fat. amazing. They do a great job, and they make their own blue cheese dressing. Oh, my goodness, and their blue cheese... Yes. And I found out that they don't even use like canola oil or anything in their blue cheese. So they have good ingredients. The only problem is they're expensive because I think the wings average out to be like $1.40 a wing. There's so, a, that's but, a, a delicious $1.40 there. Yeah. So it's always a treat when we get them and we get them very rarely. So, so Anthony goes, okay, let's order them. So I'm like, we'll go pick up the debris. We'll order the wings. And then by the time we're picking up the debris, because it's only around the corner, we'll be good. So we get everything picked up, pitch black, there's no lights, it's on a major street, so we have to like be parked on the sidewalk. I'm worried about cars driving down this major street. And you're overtired. And I'm exhausted, because I've been up since 5 a.m. I just did four football games, and it's 9 o'clock at night, 9.30 at night. Everything gets in the car, we're just trying to rake up like the dead leaves, because this stuff's been sitting there for a couple weeks, evidently. I pick up one more stick, overtired, I throw it in the back of the truck, and I shatter my entire rear window. I was I was so pissed. I'm calling Rachel and I'm like, oh, I just broke my rear window. She's like, what? But my response really was like, you need to go to bed. Like, Your response I just... was much better than my response would have been to you if you did this. Well, thanks for saying that. Because I, I, all I could think of was like, oh my goodness, this poor man. I know that you felt terrible that, that this happened. It was a total accident. 
and it reminded me of when I was going back and forth to college and I had an hour trip, you know, one way and then back the other way. And I was doing a job. I was I was covering 10 different police stations. And so I was just always in my car, just constantly in my car. And I would just get tired. Like you're just tired of it and I want to get home. And in trying to drive fast and get home, I would get like a speeding ticket. Your dad was a saint. Yeah. Because I would have killed my child if he, if one of them got the amount of speeding tickets that you got when you were in college. Because I mean, you were on your dad's insurance, right? I, I was. <laughs> I had a red car. That's the That was the knucklehead thing. It was a red Firebird. Like, you're just like, please give me a ticket. Who buys their teenager a red Firebird? An awesome dad. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so... I just knew that whole, like, you. of course you didn't mean to, like, throw a tree through your windshield, but it's like you're just overtired and you're you're done reasoning. And even Anthony was like, I don't even know how you did it because I hit the center window. Now, of course, I don't even have a cheap single pane rear, like, window on my truck. I have an F-250 Lariat that's got a power sliding window. And it's tinted with heated glass. Okay. So just like everything you could possibly have. It also here. has a built-in stove. And so I hit the center glass. Like you couldn't make this shot again. Right. Well, here's the thing. The center glass didn't break. So it's basically one big piece with a hole cut in the middle. Uh -huh. And then there's a center glass that would slide back and forth. The center glass, is, which is where I hit it, that didn't break but everything around it broke. Oh man. And of course it's like, you know, that glass, I forget what it tempered. Yeah. So it's just in millions of pieces across the back of my leather seats. Fortunately, I put my seat covers back on. Well, good job. And then we had to come back home and now clean this up and try to like cover it up. And of course this happens on a Saturday night. So all the window places are closed today. Yep. And from what I can see, I try to call the insurance company because I'm not—I wasn't even sure if this is going to get covered by insurance. Um, it is. Hopefully, they're We're saying praying. it is because looking online, it's nine hundred and eighty dollars <laughs> for the window, not including installation. Oh Lord, please let it be covered. So yeah, now according to Geico, it's covered with only a fifty dollar deductible. But when I'm looking online, I'm trying to like schedule it, and they're like, "Well, you can't schedule any kind of appointment until Tuesday because Monday's a holiday." So I'm hoping I can just show up at the glass place tomorrow and they can fix it. Maybe I'm hoping they're gonna be open because otherwise I've got a big plastic bag over the back of my And it window. has been pouring. <laughs> like that um, little uh, pool, like paddling pool that I got to use in a future um, game that we're gonna do in this series. I was using it as an umbrella. Like it was, the rain was coming down so hard that I had to like cover myself and everything that I was carrying by like wearing this thing on my head. So this isn't the silliest thing I've worn on my head this week. No. I also wore a pool on my head. Yeah, so we actually did a full day of eating vlog on, we were released on Friday, mm -hmm. right? Or on Saturday, I don't even remember what day it was anymore. Saturday. I think it, was, it released yesterday, Saturday. So in there, yeah, Rachel bought that pool, but I wanted to mention in that video, you know, you went through all of those different like Halloween options. Yeah. Which we did not even know, like we made that video on Friday. Yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden we found out about the Teal Pumpkin Project. Yeah, because I mean, I've seen, you know, that having that Teal Pumpkin out. I had no idea what that meant. And so, yeah, like I'm learning more about it. So I'm going to go try to register our house as like a Well, you've teal... got the hair to match. Yeah. You can wear that hair on like Halloween. And my face is like a jack-o'-lantern a little, <laughs> right? So. Yeah, we didn't even know about that Teal Pumpkin Project. Our like feeling was is that like, listen, we have this channel because we're trying to change lives and we're trying to change family lives more yeah. specifically. And we truly believe that eating all of these processed foods and all of this sugar, like we're giving our children poison. So why should we be handing out what we consider to be a poison? Like they right. get it enough hidden 
in foods that they don't even think they're getting it in. Exactly. But we still wanted to make it fun. Right. Wanted you to like get something that if you got it in your trick or treat bag, you'd be happy with it. Right. Right. Not like, oh, great. An eraser. What am I going to do with one eraser? You know, so. Make and it Halloween fun. is like an important day for us. Not so much the spooky stuff, but. No. Rachel's dad loved Halloween. My dad loved Halloween. And it was funny. What did he used to hand out? He used to hand out stuffed animals. He used to hand out beanie bags. Babies. Can you imagine going to our house and like, here, trick or treat. I don't want a candy bar. I want a full Beanie Baby in the height of when Beanie Babies yeah. were popular. Well, and he continued that um, until, you know, the, the year he died. Uh, he died in early October, so he didn't make it to that um, Halloween. But he had already cleared the shelves of the local store to, to make sure he had enough... Um, Stuffed animals for, for the trick-or-treaters. He loved just giving things away. Yeah. So, so because of that, like, Halloween's important to us. So we have, like, the entire family gets together, us and Rachel's brother and our sister-in-law and her mom. And they all come over. Everybody sits in front of our house. And we just make it a night, right? We, like, order food or cook oh, food. Oh, yeah. And we are really blessed we have usually more than 300 trick-or-treaters that yeah. come. They, they use a lot, some people come uh, bus in from area neighborhoods where maybe it's like apartment complexes or, you know, they just don't have a lot of, um, you know, a, availability to trick-or-treat. So they come to our neighborhood, which I love. Yeah, we thought it was weird when we first moved here. We've been here for what, four years now? Uh-huh. And we live across from like a driving range. And like all of a sudden we're sitting out there and we're handing buses. out stuff and we start seeing buses pull up and park along the driving range and all of these kids getting out to go trick or treating. I think it's because this neighborhood has not changed in 50 years. No. So it's like the same demographics living here. And I think because of that, you have a lot of people like you who grew up here and then moved back here. And so it just stayed that way and people know the neighborhood so they all show up here i love it i mean i just think it's it's so much fun i love trick-or-treating i love halloween it's an opportunity for you to like get to see your neighbors if yep. you don't know if you're not you know like everybody is outside i won't you know you won't see them again until christmas when we're putting like the little lighted bags in our um you know front yard but I just love the whole sense of community and I love giving stuff away and seeing like the kids all dressed up. I mean, it's just fun. So uh, our theme for this year, I've harvested all of the um, Dr. Seuss stuff from church from the last series. So we're gonna do a, a Dr. Seuss themed um, presentation in our front yard. That's how I'm gonna decorate the front yard. So I'd be interested to find out what you do for Halloween and leave down in the comments below, like, what are you decorating? Are you dressing up for, for Halloween yourself? Do you do anything on your front lawn to kind of make it more, you know, fun for, for Halloween and for yeah. the trick-or-treaters? I like um, having something that's a little less scary. Some people really deck out in really scary stuff, and but I can remember my kids being like, I'm not going to that house. Oh, yeah. I remember in our old neighborhood when the kids were little, there was one person that it was, was like, epic. he would sit in a chair. And then they turned their whole house into a haunted house, right? And he would sit in a chair, and when you you would think it was, you thought it was just like a stuffed dummy. Yeah. And you would walk up, and he would jump out and scream at you. Our kids wouldn't go near that house. And I think one year, Anthony yes. like got the courage to go into the house, and we had to go in after her. He would like so, somehow like just stood still, and they they came and got us. They're like. You have to come get him. He, he won't move. He can't move. So um, he was actually like frozen in fright. So one of the other things that they did, if you remember, is they would actually build a false wall on the front of their house. Yes. And then they'd have picture frames cut out. And then family members would be in that picture frame. And so it looked like it was just a, you know, a spooky picture with someone dr dressed up. But it was like they could reach out and get you when when you came by because it was like they were hidden behind the walls. And so, yeah, like Anthony just crumbled in front of their house and I just had to come and pick him up and carry him out of there because he, he literally was frozen with fright. So speaking of candy, look what came in the mail today or <gasps> yesterday, actually. Oh, keto the bars. The new keto bar. I never know how to do this box. Look, because it's kind of like it's right side here and it's right side here. Okay, I'm really happy because Miss Beth in our Facebook family group had posted like, look what I got and they're delicious. And I'm like, oh, 
We didn't get any. I'm like super jealous. Of course I got some. So these are Yay. keto bars. These are the original keto bars. They're Not the, the original first. flavor, but the original company. And I love keto bars. Of all the bars that I get, these are my favorite. They're also the most dangerous for me. Because they're like fudge. They're like fudge to me. And speaking of fudge, I just came up with a recipe for a keto peanut butter fudge. Are you for real? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wait till you try this. We're going to film a video for it within the next week or so. Yay! It is going to be so good. Perfect in time for the holidays. Okay, I'm excited now. So, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about these. So... I like the owner, John, but Keto Bars just have incredible macros. If you're interested, there is a link down below. And they have three other flavors. They have what, a chocolate almond, and a this, chocolate coconut, a mint chocolate, and then this is the new flavor. It's like a mashup with Keto Connect. Yeah, it's, it's a collaboration with Keto Connect. And these are chocolate covered strawberries. I don't know if that focused, so if it didn't, I'm sorry. Um, I kind of miss chocolate covered strawberries. So. Yeah, I'm so excited about these. So the ingredients on these, where are the ingredients? Oh, that's like dark Ooh, on dark. Dark on dark. Can you read that? Chocolate, almonds, coconut, strawberries, erythritol, cocoa, water, coconut oil, salt, stevia, and natural flavors. Awesome that's ingredients. For like a, you know, chocolate bar. And then the macros on these are what? 220 calories for the whole bar. Is that 18 grams of fat? Yes. It's five, five grams, grams of protein, protein, 17 total carbohydrates, seven grams of dietary fiber. And how much erythritol is that? Is that five? Five. Five grams of erythritol. So, so five it's net five carbs. net carbs for the bar, but it's just because it's got like chocolate and stuff in it. They're so but good. They're so good. But I figure we can try these. Yes, please. Don't use your teeth. And that's why they're like fudge. Look at that. Ooh, it oh definitely, my gosh, it smells like it strawberries. It definitely smells like chocolate covered strawberries. Oh my gosh. Focus. Oh, sorry. There we go. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is exactly like chocolate covered strawberries. Wow, that's good. I really expected them to be good, honestly, because I'm like, Keto Connect is not going to put their name on something that isn't delicious. This is delicious. Yeah. So when you bite into it, you get like a chocolate, mm -hmm. then you get a burst of strawberry. Yeah. Almost like those, remember wow. the candies that you would get that had like the strawberry, like the filling, like the goo, the gooey filling and yeah. stuff. Yeah. The stuff that everybody would like pick through and take one bite and then put it back in a package. Wow. Was like Russell Stover's and yeah. stuff. And then... So it's like that. It's a, you get like that burst of the strawberry, mm -hmm. and then it goes back to chocolate, and then finishes off with a note. It's kind of weird. Like, are you getting that? Like, yeah. You the, and you can see the strawberries all through it. That is good. That is delicious. Okay, you guys need to come up with a chocolate covered cherries one because that I really miss. <laughs> Rachel, that was her deal at Christmas. That was my group. Uh, the day after Christmas, she's like, "Go get me all the chocolate covered uh, cherries you can find." I love chocolate covered cherries. This is delicious. Those are really good. So again, there's a link down below. This is a limited edition flavor. I know that. Mm. So like, they're not keeping it, or at least right now. So when they're gone, they're gone. So if you're interested, you might want to go in down and use them. They don't have a coupon code or anything like that that they give out to anybody. But I do know that if you've never purchased from them, if they have an email list, if you sign up for the email list, I think you can get like 10% off. It's worth signing up for the email. So They won't be like Joanne Fabrics where you, or Hobby Lobby where you get like 47 emails per day. No, no. You get, like John puts out like a blog and so sometimes you'll get like a thing of like just what's going on and that's, or being notified when there's a new product or something like that. Oh my like goodness. I, I have to go through my emails. I have like 50 emails from Michael's. I picked up her phone the other day. I had to do like our expense reports and stuff for church. And I'm like, you have 487 unopened emails. Will you please go through these? Like it's every week. I don't. Okay. I don't. Let me ask you guys. When you look on your phone and it's got that little red circle saying like three unanswered calls or three missed text messages or I guess it's right. Three unanswered text messages and three missed calls. Um, and then it's got that little number with emails. I don't know about you guys. I cannot stand seeing that little red circle. It doesn't bother me And I've got to immediately go 
and open it up and clear it out. I never want, if there, if it says one, it annoys me. Really? I cannot stand seeing that little thing. And so I'm constantly, I mean, yes, I get off of a game two hours later and there's like a hundred emails and 99% of them are all like garbage. garbage. And then of course, all the garbage gets through. But the yes. important stuff yes. shows up in spam. Absolutely. So I'm sorry. I have like nine email accounts and I constantly have to go through them. And then I go through the spam and I'm finding messages that, that are you super guys important. have sent us like a week and a half, two weeks yeah. ago asking us a question. And it's like usually in the spam. So what happens is, is I'm sorry. Like I will eventually find it because I actually go down the spam and go one after the other, after the other, after the other. But yeah. there's like a thousand in there within three days. But like, yeah, but like your important email that we want doesn't get doesn't through. Doesn't get through. But Denny's twenty percent off your meal. Like we got those aplenty. So I don't know how you deal with the four hundred, and then you have to go through them at some point. I do. I usually it's like once a week, but I just know that that number means like, oh, this is going to be like an hour, but I would rather just spend one hour and just do it in one hour than to be like five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five, you know what I mean? Like it's You can all do it time. in like 30 seconds if you do it like every time you pick up your phone. Oh, there's 10 there. Let me just delete them. You don't know how many times Joanne Fabrics is emailing me. I get those too though. I feel like we're in a relationship. It's like a lot. <laughs> and then what about, do you guys delete old emails? Cause I delete old emails. I don't always, if I should, but I don't I just always. go through them like, oh, I, the only emails I save are ones that like, I want to reference back to like later on. But like, if it's just like YouTube notifies me, somebody's left a comment. Oh no. I read it, delete, read it, delete. Like old expense things. I replied to that expense report from church. Delete, I don't need it anymore. Yeah, but sometimes if I throw things out, then all of a sudden I need them. So like, yeah, there's old conversations or like, did you pay, you know, like a water bill four years ago? And there's like an email about that with like this city. I save it. Not me. I'm wanting, I, but that, again, I was even horrible when everything was paper. You know, like they would say like, you've got to save all your stuff for five years. If I could save it for three years, that was good. Cause I'm just not saving stuff. The greatest thing that ever hit my life was digital expense report. Yes. So the church actually introduced it to me. So I started Expensify. using it for our business. We use a program called Expensify. It's awesome. Where as soon as you buy something, you take a picture of it with your phone or actually this little thing, just you hit the little button. It takes a picture of the receipt. And then you type everything all in. All the details. Like all, and it'll even, like, if you give it time, read it for you. But I don't have the patience for that. I Me just neither. go in and say, like, yeah, I bought this on Amazon. This is how much this is what it's for. And then I can throw the receipt out. Yeah. And it keeps everything. So I'm using it for the landscaping business. I'm using it for, like, you know, Two Crazy Ketos. And we use it, obviously, for church. That has made my life easy. Is no it, more, like, piles of receipts that I have to go through on tax day. Is it expensive? No, they have a free version of it. So they have one version where you have to pay if you have like a lot of receipts, and, you know, and you want to like do the, the automatic scanning. Mm -hmm. But there's a free version of it if you don't want to be bothered with the automatic scanning, which the automatic scanning takes too long anyway. Yeah, I was talking to somebody who was who's an accountant and they said that they like on like in tax season get garbage bags of receipts that was like, me put on their desk that was me i i would rage quit that job <laughs> i remember even when i was young i mean when i'm talking about when i was like what 19 years old 18 years old i was in college i was working in real estate and i used my mom's accountant because again you know i yeah. was working for myself and i had to have all of these receipts and stuff and i did i walked into her accountant with like literally like a big like ziploc bags of here's all my receipts no i i didn't know what to do i was like 18 years old <laughs> So yeah, I, I'm enjoying like that Expensify. And I also use that program called Paperless for just like our purchases. Yeah, and you can scan. Yeah, so that one you just scan in. If you buy a new dryer, you scan it in and saves it on my computer. And then I never have to even keep the receipt. And then if I need it for something later on, like a warranty or something like that, we just had that with our pool cleaner. I just go in and type like, you know, pool cleaner and it pulls up the receipt and I can give it right to the company. Yeah, the, I but I really like that Expensify. It's like super convenient. I just have to like, like really, I've disciplined myself. Don't walk away from the the 
the checkout until you've taken a picture of that. I do that too. I mean, I know I annoy people. Like I was in Office Depot the other day and I had to buy something and I literally like, I put everything down. The people behind me are like, can you get out of the way? It's my turn. I'm like, nope, taking a picture. Cause yeah. I lose receipts on the way to the car. Yeah. So, so for the rest of the week, you know, like I said, other than my car, it was actually a really good week. It Food was. wise has been fun. We've, you know, we've had keto chow a couple days. But we've been eating a lot of our recipes because in the midst of making the website work better and finally getting the recipe section the way I want where it's divided into um, different categories, we've decided like we need to redo the pictures. So we've been slowly re-eating through our recipes. Which has not made me sad. I also found out I have probably about 20 recipes that I created that aren't listed on the website. They're just in the back end because there's no pictures because... The whole idea, the, the reason that I even did those recipe things and even started the website, it was a back-end thing for us because I would create recipes for us for our own keto journey because we weren't even doing the website. We didn't no. even have the channel at the time when I but did But you it. wanted to remember. I didn't want to lose them. And how again, did I do that? Like, I was like, where can I put these? And I know I could have just stored them digitally on my computer, but I was afraid I would lose them there. And then your mom had started keto and I wanted to be able to just easily share Print it. Print it and give it to her. So we just started a cheap blog. And that's so, I've got a bunch of recipes on there that I found that we need to create videos for and I need to actually make public. So I kind of want to make them public now and put just like picture coming soon. Right. You know? So even if there's not a video for it, at least you guys could look up the recipe. But I like, I even found like, we don't even have one printed on there for like the Mexican shredded chicken. Oh yeah. I've got one and that I made great. for cannoli cream. Yes. I've got like a whole bunch of recipes. So, you know, what do you think? Should I just put them up there and with no picture until we get a chance to make them? Or should I leave them hidden in the back end? I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> Let them tell us. But yeah, food-wise, it's been fun. So yesterday was simple, though. It was the keto chow. Where you had keto chow, right? I didn't eat anything until we had wings. Yeah. So. And the wings were so good. But we didn't cook. You want to do our comments? Yes, please. Oh. Do we have a subscriber of the week? Yeah, we do. I also mentioned, forgot to mention, we are going to do, we promise, the 5,000 subscriber giveaway this week. This week. We were waiting and waiting and waiting, and we got our last, or not our last thing, I'm still looking for thermal mugs. Okay. But that won't be in the box anyway. But we got tape measures. Yes. They're so super cute. The story behind these, we ordered this from a company, and then they said, like, oh, we can't, we, we had a problem, so I'm like, fine, cancel the order, and then they're I didn't so get my money, and I called them back, and they're like, oh, we shipped them out, and I'm like, we said we were canceling. He's like, oh, yeah, we decided not to cancel it. I'm like, good thing, like, I never got we're, around to ordering from another company because I was in the process of doing that. Yeah, but these are super fun. They've got our little logo on the yep. front. So they say 2KK on them. And we wanted that to go in the box because we're always talking about how the scale is the devil. Yep. And um, we wanted to have, like, an alternative way to kind of track your progress. Yeah, so these are five-foot vinyl tape measure with a little button on the back that presses on. So you can throw out the double scale. Yes. And measure yourself with this. So these are kind of cool. I so they're them. listed on the website. So these are gonna be in the box as well in all three of the giveaway boxes. We're yep. gonna put these in there. And I think we're going to do the giveaway box as a live stream, like announcing the giveaway. Wait, what? Yeah. Live? Yeah. I would like to apologize right now for whatever nonsense I say. I'm trying to get her to do more live guys, but like, she's so afraid, but doesn't Balls. Ev everybody Balls. wants unfiltered Rachel. Oh dear Lord. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> We're definitely going to start live streaming at least once a week or once every couple weeks. It will be once live football, streaming. Once football season is over. So, okay. So subscriber of the week. Yay. Um, Open. There we go. Okay, so subscriber of the week, there's no pictures for him, but it was Charles. Hey, Charles. And Charles wrote, celebrated my one-year anniversary on the keto lifestyle. I've lost 80 pounds and 10 inches from around my waistline. Wow. I'm seven pounds away from my goal weight of 184 pounds. 
and would like to really ideally reach 175 pounds. Wow, that is awesome. Congratulations, Charles. He wrote, I've added the under the sun, under sun band workout last week to my cardio workout, which those things are awesome. They will kick your butt. Uh, they're kicking my butt. Uh, my greatest regret is not taking measurements or pics before I started this journey. Me too. Yeah. Like there's two pictures of me like going along the way. It was actually the pictures of me before I started keto. Mm -hmm. And then there's pictures of me after I've lost 80 pounds. Yeah. But there's nothing in between. So if you haven't been taking pictures of yourself, take some pictures. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I regret that. Like I said, I have the early one, then I have the 80 pound one, then I have after 100 pounds. But I don't have that whole progress. And I certainly don't have measurements. And some days you just need to sit back and reflect on that. Because I can be really hard on myself. Because if, you know, right now I'm impressed that I am staying the same weight even though we are on this reverse diet and we are increasing our calories. That's a victory, right? right. That you have, I'm not going up in weight. However, I'm just staying the same. And once you get into a maintenance mode, where are the wins, right. right? Like you start to get a little bit like, oh, I'm used to like the scale going down and that felt so good. Well, that's the time that you can break out your pictures that you've taken and be able to reflect and be like, wow, yeah, this was a gradual thing. This was a lot of work. This wasn't just like I lost, you know, I went 100 pounds heavier to, to where I'm at now. You know, you can just kind of like go back and celebrate some of those victories along the journey. And even now, like because being in our reverse diet, it is a little frustrating because we both want to drop a few pounds, but we know what we're doing right now is more beneficial for us long term. Yeah. And Robert did warn us, like you may put on a couple of pounds and you may gain a couple of inches of fat, but it's gonna come off super easy when you get to the end of this. He also wrote, would not have been able to succeed without the support of groups like this and your videos to keep me inspired. Oh, Charles, thank you. What a nice yes. thing to and say. And congratulations, that is an awesome accomplishment, That Charles. is a serious success. So Terry wrote, Hey Terry. Maple pumpkin super coffee is super good. It's super it good. It is super good. In fact, I'm drinking the creamer in my coffee here. What has happened that you're sitting here drinking a coffee and I'm drinking a bubbly? Maple pumpkin. It's, it's making me want to drink more and more a coffee. coffee addict. It's, it's really good. Like, I haven't had a coffee today. Is there still coffee in the pot? Yes, there's enough for you to have one cup. Okay. Because that's what we said we're going to do. So yeah, we have the maple pumpkin. We did that review. That's gonna come out this week, probably Tuesday. And we really love that stuff. I don't know how long that flavor is. They did give us a coupon code, but it's not specific to Two Crazy Ketos. And mm -hmm. again, we don't make any money off of it. No, we're not um, affiliated. I don't remember what it is. I wanna say it was Super 20, but I will put it down in the description below. Uh, along with the link for it if you want to try to get that maple pumpkin stuff. But the review is going to come out on Tuesday. But it is so good. Really good. So um, she wrote, I can't get rid of those darn moths. Uh, I got rid of everything, but I still have them. I found empty cocoons on the ceiling one day. Because they get, the cocoons get in everywhere. Uh, she said, the worst part is I took a keto bar to work. I opened it up and it was still in there. Um, it became a day of fasting. What? So far, that was the only bar they've been in. Summer. Man. Yeah, those pantry moths, when you get them, they're hard to get rid of. Tenacious. That's why we just started now. The bird food is being stored in the deep freezer. Because I buy big 25 pound bags of the bird food. And it's got to get stored in the freezer. And Grayson has like been able to come up with lots of outdoor sounds. Yeah, because he spent seven he's learned, days outside. He's learned a lot. Yeah. So Katie wrote. Hey, Katie. Oh, sweet guacamole. Y'all are cracking me guacamole. up. And that is good medicine. I'm so happy about the fam who is here. I'm thinking we need a 2KK bloopers episode. L-O-L-O-L. <laughs> Sending hugs and peace to all. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine? It would be like a two hour movie. We have so many bloopers. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Especially if I would actually save the footage that we don't put in. I think we could have a good bloopers just with all of the Rachel sayings that make it into the videos, let alone what doesn't make it into the video. This is why I'm afraid of live. So Maximum wrote, Hey Maximum. I like the idea of a testimonials page. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely want to do that. I just have to figure out how to do it. I think that there's a plugin that I can get on WordPress that would allow me to put it on there and you could submit your testimonial directly on the website and then it sends it to us for approval and we can kind of like jostle things around and put pictures in and stuff. So once I figure out how to do that, we're going to put that on there. And the first one that has to go on there is your mom's. 
Yes, we need to get that woman we on there. We definitely have to have like her on there because that's part of like what encouraged us to even you know start two crazy Tito's. Yeah. They also wrote, "Love the burn story." Poor Rachel. Oh man, yes, it has been a slow healing process. I mean, I know this is going to be TMI, but like every single time I pull down my drawers, some of my skin comes off with it. It's terrible. I know. I shouldn't laugh, but it's still kind of funny. It is. <laughs> And I have to kind of circle a chair before I sit down. Um, Nancy wrote, hey, tape Nancy. measures are a fantastic idea. Well, you've got one. Yay. Um, Candy wrote, hey, Candy. tumblers. I don't drink coffee, so don't hate me, Rachel. That's okay. I don't hate you. I could never hate you. <laughs> um, yeah, but I totally get that like with the tumblers because it does chill like cold beverages really nice yeah so we're not gonna get like a contigo thing like this we're gonna get like tumblers where you can put hot or cold in it but i really only want stainless steel so i find a lot of tumblers that you can get imprinted but they have like plastic liners and i don't want the plastic no. liners we want the stainless steel with the stainless steel inside it's just they're more money and you have to buy x amount of them up ahead of time so we're going to do that but it'll just be like one a, a lid on the top so it, if you knock it over it won't pour the whole thing but it won't be like one of these snap kind of things we're just saving our pennies up yeah a vet wrote hey vet tumbler please i love pumpkin stuff and it's so hard this time of year in the stores it is because there's a lot of stuff there out is. there that is like that's you know garbagey there's candy there's muffins there's all kinds of like pumpkin shaped candy corn oh my goodness yes and coffee drinks and then like i'm eating cold and hot yep right and so that can be really frustrating so when i find something like this super coffee where i can get my pumpkin spice fix without derailing my plans, you know, that really is a delight. And the same thing with the Stoka bars. Yes. The, Sp the Stoka bars um, that are the pumpkin spice are a nice Those flavor. Those are really, really Those good. Those are really good if you're looking for something that's keto. Yeah. Uh, Carol wrote, hey, Carol. pumpkin spice. I just ordered a pumpkin spice assortment from Skinny Syrups. Oh, nice. I haven't even checked We've them out. We've never tried their skinny syrups. Yeah, but that's, I'm, I'm sure it's delicious. I will even buy pumpkin candles pumpkin like scented oils like i love the whole season and the, the you like smell everything fall of pumpkin uh jasmia wrote hey, pumpkin jasmia. everything yes so joe's friend wrote hey joe's friend that would be a no to pumpkin and all other fall flavors but a great big yes to the keto brick mug cake video well that would be right over rachel's head oh, man i hope you heal quickly rachel thanks for another entertaining video thank you i'm sorry i talked about my butt so much yeah if there's anything about rachel you can guarantee she will always be entertaining it may not be appropriate though <laughs> So Constance wrote, Hey Constance. Your mom should work for a hospital. Like seriously. Seriously. How did she have like a burn unit on the ready? Like that's bizarre. Rebecca wrote, Hey Rebecca. Love keto on the couch. You guys are just so fun to watch. I finally convinced my husband to join keto with me. Yay. Also very excited to get my very first keto crate next week. Thanks for the coupon code guys. Awesome. Hope your butt feels better Rachel. Thank you very much. <laughs> So Kim wrote, Hey Kim. I love watching your keto on the couch and other videos. I like the old format of your product reviews. Some of us need to hear the information more than once. Aw, thank you. She wrote, Rachel, I understand how you could say may may instead of meme. The problem is the reuse of the words with different pronunciations. Yes. Oh my gosh. But I like totally dated myself. It was so bad. It was so embarrassing. Like, ugh. <laughs> Yeah, we're still working with our format a little bit. Again, we're trying to shorten videos a little bit, but without sacrificing content or our personalities. So it's still a work in progress. Yes. So Ellen wrote, Hey, Ellen. I knew there was a reason you showed up at my feet a few weeks ago. I'm a bird person too. Oh. My African Grey's name is Bosco. What a cool name. That is a really uh. cool name. I actually messaged her back to ask her how old she was, and her African Grey is 35. Because they're like, they live to be like 50. Yeah, Rachel was not super happy when I brought Grayson home, and she's like, how long do they live? And I'm like, 40 to 50 years. Well, I mean, it's a super big commitment, and then you have to think about like, okay, what's going to happen if I pass away and this bird's outliving me? I actually want to get another bird. I've just got to try to figure out how to bring this up to Rachel. I want a <laughs> cockatoo. I would love a cockatoo, I want a cockatoo but, but they but live to be like 70. I, but I don't want an umbrella cockatoo because you can hear their screams like two miles away. I want like a dew corpse or something like that. One of the smaller ones. I really want a cockatoo. 
And if Tara Simpson doesn't stop putting pictures of that cat it is so in cute. Facebook, we're gonna have a new cat soon. Oh my gosh, I love her cats. <laughs> and that cat is so awesome. It's like every time I see those pictures, I'm gonna like, I'm like, I need to go get another cat. I know. I want another cat. I know. I want another cat. Tara, and I you love... want a mushy face cat. I like the mushy face cat. I want the flat face cat. I know. <laughs> Queen Shelly Hughes wrote, hey, Queen I Shelley. love your vlogs, but uh, when there are about maybe 10 different vlogs to watch in a day, I change the settings and listen to you at one and a half sp times speed because oh. you speak so quickly. Oh. One of my Facebook subscriptions, I can listen to uh, 1.75 to two times faster because he speaks so slowly. Wow, that's neat. I didn't even know that you could do that. I did not know. I, do our Does it become like a helium effect? <laughs> Do you talk and you're all of a sudden you're talking really fast and, and I didn't high? even know that you can speed up the videos. I had I no idea. I did not know that. We are like so far behind in technology. We're so old. Shanna wrote. Hey, Shanna. I drink my coffee with a straw too. Yes, high five. <laughs> straw coffee people unite. Sheila wrote. Hey, Sheila. I share a link that I want to go back to my phone messages. That way I can go back to it and it doesn't fill up my bookmark. That was about like... What do you do when there's all these websites and you're trying to like remember where to go? Oh, that's smart. And yeah, I didn't think about, well, like sending a link back to my phone, but that would probably just annoy me too because then it just get lost in my messages. And I have those stupid little round red circles again. Renee wrote. Hey, Renee. I do home health physical therapy, so I'm on the road all day. Wow. I'm still on the hunt for an affordable cooler inside of my car. Yeti and their competitors are just so pricey. The one I use requires several ice packs to keep my items from going bad, and I even freeze a water bottle, which is fully melted by the end of the day. I usually pack items that are simple and easy to eat, like chunks of chicken and cheese, don't hate me, Rachel, and sardines. <gasps> they are boneless and skinless and in olive oil, and I have two flavors. I have boiled eggs and cheese sticks for the drive home snack. I love her planning. Yeah, that is awesome. So we did do a review of an angle cooler. I mean, it is still a little bit more of a pricey uh, cooler. I'll leave a link over but Rachel's head. But not as expensive. It's not as pricey as, as the Yeti. And Rachel wasn't super keen on me spending that much money either, but the amount of money I've saved on ice alone yeah. has paid for it. So what we do is on Monday, Anthony and I put a frozen one gallon water jug in there. Mm-hmm. And we put a bag of ice, and that lasts the entire week. And I don't crazy. take that cooler out of the car. It is in a hot South Florida car for a week. Yeah. Now, by Friday, pretty much the water is melted, but it's still, like, ice cold. It still blows me away. So, yeah, it just saved me so much money on ice. It was worth it. Also, because I did respond to her on, like, the YouTube channel itself, <laughs> I noticed that they've got a smaller version now, but the smaller version is the same price as the one that we have, but one of the colors is discounted $50. I do not care what color my cooler is. Yeah, okay? so I'll leave a link for it down below. Any again, color. Look at my. Any we don't color make any do. money off them, but it is. I'm so impressed with that cooler. Yeah, me too. And just how long the ice lasts, and it never ever leaks. And for a soft sided cooler to not leak is like super impressive. It's Even amazing. when I turn it upside down, it doesn't leak. So Scott wrote Hey, Scott. Hey, Crazy Ketos. First, you guys rock, and you're so cute together. Aw. But I need your help. Good news. I've lost 17 pounds in the first two months on keto. That's awesome. Bad news. My friends tell me it's the worst diet ever, and it will destroy your insides. I'm not as knowledgeable on keto as I should be, and I want to have some ammunition to defend the keto diet. Any help is appreciated. Aw. Uh, first of all, what I would do is point them to Dr. Canberry. You can point them to Dr. Berg. You can point them to all different people who are on the internet. I personally, like I always tell people, go get yourself a bunch of copies of Dr. Barry's book, Lies My Doctor Told Me, and hand it out. Yeah. You can also get the Keto Answers Keto book. Answers was that really book has awesome. got like right great information for you, especially if you're trying to defend yourself. And it's in a question answer form. Yeah. And you can just kind of look up your questions that you may have. But when people come to me and say like, oh, this is the worst thing, you know, ever, like you're going to ruin your kidneys or saturated fat is bad for you and all that stuff. My answer is always, can you please show me that documentation or show me those different studies so that I can further educate myself? Exactly. Because most of the time they're not going to be able to give you anything. And you know why? There is none. You know, people are still basing their idea of saturated fat being bad for you 
on the Ansel Keys Seven Country Study. Which and has been discredited. Yes. Everywhere. I mean, he falsified stuff. I mean, he took out countries because it didn't get the right result. So they're not gonna be able to provide you with the documentation that's discrediting keto unless it's like just a bad documentation. Yeah, but I mean, I think just nicely saying, like show, show me the research that you, you know, like come across because I want to educate myself. I think that's the best way to handle it because you know, you want to have more than just hearsay. Right. You know, if you've read something, something, or maybe there was a celebrity that said, "Oh, that's bad," and you respect that celebrity, but they don't have any kind of research backing up their claim. Right. You know, it makes sense that okay, well, if there's no research that shows that this is a bad diet, I'm going to keep going because I'm having success. And congratulations on the success you've had so far. Absolutely. Allie wrote, Hey, Allie. Would love the keto brick muffin video. I have a few flavors that aren't a favorite, but I don't want to waste them either. I love the peanut butter one, though. I would love a big cup like the ones that they used on Friends. Rachel, you need to find a Dunkin' Donuts near if coffee comes back in your life. Their coffee is the best. You two have given new meaning to butt and balls. LOL. <laughs> Hope you heal fast, Rachel. God bless. That's a success, right? <laughs> butt and balls. That's how we'll be done. I actually was always a Dunkin' Donuts girl. Yeah. Like, I love Dunkin' Donuts. We we only went to Home Coffee to try to save some money because it was like $3 and, what, 73 cents or something for, for my large uh, black coffee that I used to get every day. But I love me some Dunkin' Donuts. So a -Pal wrote, Hey, a -Pal. I thought keto chow was expensive too, but after using it for ice cream, thanks for the Vitamix recipe, Joe and Rachel, and meal replacements, I'm sold on it. I have it several times a week. I still love my Rebel ice cream. Their new flavors rock, but making a keto chow ice cream meal is the way to go. Who doesn't want ice cream for dinner? Yeah, we love our keto chow for that reason because it's just something that we can keep a couple in the refrigerator and when you're in a pinch like yesterday and it's a super busy day and you don't want to cook or you don't have time to cook, you can just grab it and know that you're like you're not going to eat a bunch of hidden, hidden carbs, you're not going to kind of go off the deep end because when there's nothing prepared, what happens? You start going, well, I can just eat this or you do something like we did the last night and like you get wings. Now the wings for me was a treat, but if we don't have some keto chows prepared, we're doing a lot more of that, like going to Winn-Dixie Wings. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was actually talking to a third grader today about the pros and cons of a school uniform. Okay. And she was saying, like, on one hand, I don't like that the uniform, you know, like, has no creativity. Like, I want to bring, you know, my creativity and myself and my personality into the clothes that I wear. This is a third grader? A third grader. Okay. But sometimes it's nice to have a uniform because I can wake up as late as I want and I don't have to think about what I'm going to wear to school. Right. And I thought, that is brilliant. That is the, that is the argument for keto chow, right? Like, yeah. Like sometimes it's not, you know, it doesn't showcase any like cooking talent necessarily. You know, if you're just making a shake, it's, it, you know, it's not all that creative. However, sometimes it's really nice to not have to think about what I'm going to eat and I can just grab it and go. So Candy wrote, Hey Candy. Rachel, so sorry to hear about your tea accident. I'm glad you didn't drink it. How bad would that have been going down your throat? Oh my gosh. You didn't even yeah. think about that, did I you? didn't either. How hot did you make that tea? It would have been bad. Joy wrote, Hey, Joy. I had second degree burns at seven from hot tea. My wow. mom felt so bad that it was uh, that hot. Blistered skin came off. Traumatic experience. I feel your pain. Oh, my goodness, Joy. I'm so sorry. Uh, Mary wrote, Hey, Mary. Poor Rachel. I can sympathize. I burned myself with oil a few years ago. I hope you feel relief soon. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. My goodness. Jan wrote, Hey, Jan. I never thought I would say this to someone, but I really hope your butt feels better. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> Better stick with coffee. Seriously, coffee never did this to me. Marilyn wrote. Hey, Marilyn. OMG, all of Rachel's butt cheek comments. Hysterical. I am so sorry. That was a lot. That was a lot of butt cheek stuff. Tara wrote. Hey, Tara. I'm with Rachel. I wouldn't be running or doing jumping jacks if I was missing a butt cheek. <laughs> Rachel, hope you heal fast. I'm equally clumsy. A couple of years ago, I managed to give myself second degree burns on top of my foot while draining boiling water over the sink. Wow. Yeah, don't ask. Yeah, one of my 
main things that I notice every single time I see a kid approaching me is like their shoelaces untied. If I see a kid with shoelaces untied, I immediately drop to my knees and like tie my shoelace, tie their shoelaces because I am so clumsy and have like tripped so many times that I'm like, I've got to fix this. If there's even a shot that they're a tenth of a percent as clumsy as I am, like, oh my gosh, yes. Let's tie your shoes. So last one. My wrote. Hey, my. Rachel, I'm sorry about your butt cheek. Tea is meh. I used to be a big tea person, but coffee is a must in my life. I'm in the healthcare field working 12 hour shifts. Wow. I'll put one ear pod and listen to your videos. I laugh randomly and my coworkers ask me if I'm okay. I hope you never change your formats because this is why we all fell in love with your channel. Aww. I look forward to Mondays for Keto on the Couch. No one ever says I look forward to Mondays. Aww. You ha you two have a great dynamic and you never shy away from your love of the Lord. Oh, one last thing. I need Rachel's shirt. I need it. Oh, yes. The avocado. Where did we get that? A subscriber got it with Oh, that's right. Press. Yeah, we're going to have to find that and leave a link for it. Yes. So. Well, that is this week's Keto on the Couch. Uh, I have no idea how long this one is because we decided to shoot this in 4K so the front video doesn't say how long we've been filming. It could be days. It could be a really long this time. This could be Tuesday. And I'm sorry that and we didn't get, get it out Monday. And you get to see Rachel's wig in 4K. Oh, dear God. <laughs> That's probably not good. So please leave us some comments and questions for next week's Keto on the Couch down below. Also, watch for the 5,000 subscriber giveaway, which we promise will be this week. Including and a fudge video. Including The fudge video probably won't be this week. I don't know if I'm going to have time to film it this week, but it is coming soon for the holidays. So, uh, yeah, leave your questions and comments down below. And uh, if you like what you saw, please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to Until it. Until next time. Bye. bye.